Frank Stella was born May 12, 1936, in Massachusetts. At first, he painted in an abstract expressionist style. But after moving to New York City in the late 1950s, he established his reputation with a series of innovative paintings marked by great simplicity of design. In the 1960s, he made a series of paintings marked by intersecting geometric and curving shapes using vivid, harmonious colors, some of which were fluorescent. Today's lesson will focus on these geometric shapes. So for today's lesson, you're going to need some paper, water-based markers, various um, circle shapes. It's helpful to have a protractor and a ruler, but if you don't have those, you can just use the edges of books instead of a ruler for straight edge and circles to trace. And then a white crayon or oil pastel. So we'll begin by tracing um, our protractor in various positions on our paper. I'm going to use a white crayon because I'm going to do the water-based markers over top. You could also use watercolor paints would work great. So I'm just going to start by setting my protractor on the paper and tracing, pressing with my white crayon. Now this is very hard for you to see on the screen. So I'm going to actually switch to a yellow crayon that you'll be able to see better. And I will be using a yellow crayon, but it will look better in the end if you use a white crayon. Either will work. Okay, so I'm just going to continue tracing um, different geometric shapes filling my paper as I do so. Now you can choose to have the shapes intersect and overlap or not. I think it creates more interesting patterns if they overlap. So what the pattern I'm making is setting the middle of my protractor on the last curved line and then tracing the curve. So you can see already that this has created an interesting pattern. I'm going to continue placing um, more geometric shapes. You could use various circles. So here's a fruit cup that I'm going to trace the side to make a nice even circle. And I missed a little spot, so I'm just going to fill that in with my crayon. <clears throat> I'm going to make a concentric circle. That means one circle inside of another. So now I will use the lid from this little container and you see I hold the object or the protractor or the ruler carefully with my non drawing hand so that it doesn't move while I'm drawing okay I'm going to do another larger circle and there I have three concentric circles I can make an even smaller one using the other end of this container. So there are four concentric circles. I could keep going bigger by finding maybe some plates or bowls in the kitchen to trace around. I think I'm going to continue this pattern by um, extending it onto the sides of my paper here. So I've pretty well filled this paper. There's a little space here, um, but I'm okay with that. Now, another thing you could choose to do is to draw some 
some lines diagonally or make concentric squares. It's really up to you. There's no wrong or right here. So my next step would be to add color to my composition. And like I said, you could do this with watercolor pencils or watercolor paints. I'm going to use markers today. I like the brightness of the markers and also um, I think most of you have some markers like these at home. So I'm going to try to stay inside of the lines that I made in my first step as I'm coloring, but if you're using washable markers and you press well with your crayon or oil pastel, the marker won't really stick over top of the crayon. And so you'll retain those yellow or white lines that you started with your crayon. So I'm going to fill in all these wonderful shapes that I created by tracing my objects. And I'm going to try not to let not to use the same color in two adjacent or neighboring spaces. So if I used red here, I'm not going to use it there, but I could use it at one of these next spaces. So I'm going to skip around it first while I have the red marker out. And then I'll move to another color. So you can fill the colors in either randomly or with a pattern, it's up to you. So you can see that I've filled in almost all of the spaces on my page that I made by drawing my different um, curved geometric forms. And you can see in some places where I colored right over the crayon with my washable markers and the crayon lines are still visible through there. I think that has kind of a cool Frank Stella look about it. I did decide to leave some white space on this. I think it just worked with that composition. And this being an abstract composition, you could experiment and turn it and see which way you like best. There's no right or wrong answer. I tend to like this composition here. So I hope you enjoyed this Frank Stella abstract art lesson and we'll see you next time here at Brahm.